I think truth and reconciliation for Indigenous students, particularly K-12, is about knowing their history and their identities and claiming those and being proud um, to have that, that identity recognized and reflected in the curriculum in the schools that they're attending. And uh, for many of the students that I interact with, they often don't know their histories or it's been interrupted or um, there have been other barriers for them to know that. And so school for them um, often doesn't reflect any of those things. I like to see the work that we're doing in classrooms to be done together in collaborations because uh, the history is not well known by any particular group in some situations. And so when they work together, it breaks down that barrier of not knowing um, contemporary Indigenous peoples in their lives and what's happened uh, in the work that I've done that students self-identify and claim their heritage and feel more confident and proud and those interactions with non-Indigenous students allows them to be allies and do the work together. So reconciliation is something that they as individuals respond to, but then they can move forward together. And I think this generation of students that I'm working with are interested in doing the work together. I think the journey has to be an individual one first, and people have to um, situate themselves and then begin the work and working with others and that journey can um, be supported by other people who are around you um, but you have to really it has to be an individual response first so when you're working with students I think it's important that you identify who you are whether you're a settler or a community identified ally and what I mean by that is um, you know your own history and that when you're sharing with students, you have to be open about who you are and what your role is and what you know and what you don't know and who you're working beside. And so I've been um, very lucky that I've had lots of elders and knowledge carriers into the classroom who have taught me how to listen. I had um, an interesting experience with students. The land acknowledgement became uh, mandatory from the school board. And when we started to deconstruct that language, we started with Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, and Turtle Island, Métis, and Inuit as words embedded in the sentences that were being said over our announcements. And we realized that we can't understand our acknowledgement to the land until we understand those peoples and what that language means, otherwise it just becomes a, a canned, less interesting experience. And once we started to unpack what that meant for our school, which was um, on Indigenous territory, and our city was, and that our homes were, they, they made a personal connection to territory. And then we had to uncover all of that history for the area that we lived in, because it was mostly covered. I think teachers can ask for help immediately and educate themselves about what it is that they want to do in the classroom. And working beside knowledge carriers and elders is the way to do that. And know in advance that um, sacred, the sacred and ceremonies is, is not part of what classroom teachers should be doing unless they themselves um, carry that knowledge or teachings or are indigenous and I often get pressure from teachers saying that things that they want to embark on but they don't know yet that there are things that should be left um, for indigenous teachers to be teaching. I think teachers should not be afraid to begin and I think just by starting and opening space is where the beginning of the journey is with students and once that happens and you invite um, indigenous peoples into the classroom space, things will change in a good way. <laughs>